It is noon in The Hague. It is 3 p.m. in Islamabad. I'm Onita Rajpal. This is World One, live from London. It is Judgment Day for Charles Taylor, the African warlord turned Liberian president who stands accused of crimes against humanity. Right now, he's at a special court in The Hague where he is waiting for a verdict to be handed down. The 64-year-old Taylor has been on trial for five years on 11 counts of war crimes. It is alleged that between 1991 and 2002, he fueled a long and bloody civil war in neighboring Sierra Leone by army rebels in uh, exchange, arming rebels in exchange for diamonds. And the rebels' campaign of terror included widespread rape, murder, sexual slavery, and the use of child soldiers. 50,000 people lost their lives. Convicted. During Taylor will serve his sentence in a prison here in the UK. CNN's Atika Schubert joins us now from our London studio with more on that. Atika. Well, it's quite a long uh, judgment that's being read out at the moment. Basically, what uh, the judge has said at the moment is that, yes, uh, the crimes in the 11 charges have been, ha the prosecutor has proven. All right, Atika, thank you for that. Atika Schubert there here in our London studios. But as Atika was saying, it is, verdict, verdict is being closely watched in Sierra Leone and Liberia, especially by victims of the wars and by Charles Taylor's own supporters. CNN's David McKenzie is live for us in Nairobi in Kenya. With more on that, Nairobi, uh, um, David. Well, Manita, I think uh, as uh, was described, the horrifying details read out calmly by the judge of the special. Nairobi, we want to get more analysis on this. Mark Ellis is the executive director of the International Bar Association. He is well versed with uh, a lot of the issues coming to head in this uh, trial. Uh, let's go to him now, and he joins us now live in London. So, where are we at at this trial, right, uh, at the verdict hearing right now? Well, the court went through all 11. Counts uh, in order to. Uh, All right, Mark, thank you for that. Mark Ellis there in our London uh, newsroom. Uh, we, of course, we will be checking in with Atika Schubert and uh, Mark Ellis, as well as David McKenzie there in Nairobi as the verdict is handed down. And of course, we'll bring that to you live uh, when it happens. Well, the Pakistani Supreme Court found the country's Prime Minister guilty of contempt of court. It said Yusuf Raza Ghilani had defied an earlier court order to press corruption charges against the country's president. Two stories for you here on World One. The international judges are due to give a verdict in the war crimes trial of former Liberian leader Charles Taylor. And right now, Rupert Murdoch, chairman and CEO of News Corp, is testifying before the Levison Inquiry for the second day. Rupert Murdoch says he and his senior executives were misinformed and kept in the dark about the extent of phone hacking at News Corp's papers. Uh, at the inquiry into British press ethics, Murdoch was asked whether he really was ignorant of what had been going on. To that, he said, I failed, and I'm very sorry about that. Right well, now, Dan Rivers has been following the story. He joins us now from the Royal Courts of Justice here in London. We could say it's not yet high noon, but there's certainly high drama. Yeah, I mean, it's a sort of enormous mea culpa uh, this morning from Rupert Murdoch. Thank you. We Dan Rivers there here in London. Well, let's see what uh, the newspapers here in Britain are saying about all of this. There is a headline in The Scotsman that reads, uh, Cool, calm, and very well connected. It's an opinion piece that says Rupert Murdoch gave the performance of an elderly statesman as he spoke candidly about his dealings with Britain's most senior politicians compared to his stern interrogation of Mr. Murdoch's son, James, on Tuesday. The questions from Robert JQC seem more like a topical chat. Also out of Scotland, the Herald newspaper has this headline, a light shines on a murky nexus. Another opinion piece that goes on to say the Leveson inquiry has taken on an air of of soap opera. As Mr. Murdoch Sr. recounted the history of his dealings with Prime Ministers, the sequel to James Murdoch's evidence was being played out in the House of Commons. That in itself was a demonstration of the significance of this public inquiry with its ability to hold to account the commercially and politically powerful. And lastly, there is a comment piece in The Guardian with this title, Devil in the Details as Inquisition Loosens Murdoch's Tongue. And that goes on to say the plan clearly was for Castle Murdoch to be defended with well-constructed walls of obdurate denial, reinforced by bouts of forgetfulness. Jay kept piercing small gaps in Murdoch's defenses because he had gathered up a prodigious supply of facts, which he fired like slingshot at the castle walls, and partly because 
the old mogul likes to talk, and they're referring there to Robert J. Q.C., the lawyer doing the questioning. Well, uh, of course, you can read all those articles in full at facebook.com slash W1CNN. So just how damaging has the phone hacking scandal been for Murdoch, and can News Corp survive it? Peter Jukes is the author of Bad Press, The Fall of the House of Murdoch. He joins us now here on set. Peter, what did you make of his testimony today? Of course, you know, he's getting a little bit more animated. Yes, he did lose his temper at one point uh, with Robert J. QC, who was implying that this cover-up had been... Yes, they haven't uh, taken a break just yet, but we are continuing to watch the, the inquiry. We'll take you back to it uh, as soon as we can. Peter, thank you very much for being with us. You are watching World One, live from London. Politicians have warned pregnant women from mainland China against traveling to the city to give birth. Hospitals are struggling with overburdened maternity wards after exceeding their quotas of mainland moms. Hong Kong offers better opportunities for its residents, and the mothers-to-be have been uh, traveling in hopes of providing a better future for their children. Pauline Chu went to find out more. The competition for a maternity bed is fierce in Hong Kong. There just aren't enough beds. Thousands of pregnant mainland Chinese women crossing the border into Hong Kong to give birth are adding to the problem. You are watching World One live from the London. Syrian the National Council is urging the UN Security Council to hold an emergency session. That is according to the uh, news agency Agence France Presse. Activists say shelling in the Syrian city of Hama on Wednesday reduced an entire row of houses to rubble, leaving several people dead in the ruins. <laughs> has called for an emergency meeting in Cairo. Foreign ministers from member states will attend to discuss the worsening crisis in Syria. Journalist Ian Lee is following the story for us from Cairo. He joins us now live with more on that. So what options do they have on the table, Ian? Well, Manita, the Syrian National Council is going to go to the Arab League today. Right, Ian, thank you. Ian Lee there in Cairo. Nobel Peace Laureate, the Dalai Lama, spoke to CNN's Piers Morgan about the situation in Syria and the Arab Spring movement. The Buddhist leader said that every country belongs to its, to its people, not its leaders. Obviously. They're speaking to uh, Piers Morgan. We return now to our top story. After a year of deliberation, the International War Crimes Tribunal is set to deliver its verdict today in the trial of Charles Taylor. Mark Ellis is executive director of the International Bar Association. He joins us now live right here in London with more on where this, uh, I guess, the state of the verdict at this point. Yes, we're, we're now listening to the court um, in its ruling. Um, on this. Yeah, we should say that, that uh, there are 11 counts. Uh, he's been charged with 11 counts, five of which are crimes against humanity, and within that there are various, uh, there are numerous counts of whether it's murder, rape, sexual slavery, uh, other inhumane acts, as well as uh, slavery, and then, of course, uh, acts of uh, terror. We'll continue to watch all of this, and Mark will continue to join us as well uh, for more analysis. Uh, we will bring you more uh, from the, uh, the special court for Sierra Leone at The Hague as we get it. For now, we're taking a short break. We'll be right back. Well, the predictions were for an all-Spanish final in the Champions League, but not to be. Real Madrid have followed Barcelona out of the competition in the semi-finals. Amanda Davis has more on that. It's a bit of a surprise. It is. It's been the most incredible two nights yeah. uh, of football. Uh, you know, in, you can't really remember a week a week like it. Against the odds, it will be Bayern Munich against Chelsea in the final on May the 19th. And the Real Madrid coach, Jose um, Mourinho, but you kind of have to feel sorry for him because he was the one who slipped during the penalty spot kick uh, against Manchester United in Moscow and lost them the Champions League mm. final this time. And this time, even if Chelsea win, he won't really be allowed to be part of the celebrations, but he would get a medal. He'll probably be beating himself up for it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right. Thank you very much for <laughs> that, Amanda. You're watching World One live from London. Coming up, we'll tell you what's heading your way on the weather front with Mari Ramos. Hello, Mari. Hello. Well, that weather system that has been affecting Western Europe. Heavy rain and fierce winds are battering much of Western Europe. Meteorologist Mari Ramos is at the World Weather Center with more details on that. And I heard that heavy rain and winds last night here in London. Yeah, it was really windy in London. And we saw winds gusting just around that area, maybe up to about 60 kilometers per hour. So that's uh, some pretty respectable wind gusts Not right there. Not enough of this video, Monita. I know you've seen it already. Here it is again. This is a picture of the plains in Spain. Woo, come on, straight it out. You can do it. Look at that. Can you imagine? We were looking at the observations, <laughs> that is so scary, of, uh, of the airport in Bilbao around the time. Back to you and those planes, so scary.
Oh, yeah, th that was an amazing video there, amazing footage of that plane and those winds. Uh, Mari, thank you so sure. much for that. You are watching World One live from London. I'm Monita Rajpal. Stay with us her here on CNN. Our coverage of two very important stories, developing stories, uh, con continues here on CNN. One is Rupert Murdoch's testimony at the Levison Inquiry, as well as the verdict at the trial of Charles Taylor at the, uh, at the Hague. Stay with us.